important. I call the member for Murray. Uh, thank you, Acting Speaker. And the Labor Party is the only group in Australia that, uh, that uh, continues to think that by adding more money to the existing funding arrangements for education uh, at a rate that's over and above the cost increases that are expected to be in a sector, somehow they're the only group in Australia that believe that that is somehow or other a cut. They know it's untrue, they know it's deceitful, and we all know it's disgraceful that they continue to talk along these monies. Yeah, sure, they promised more money. But when doesn't Labor promise more money for every sector in Australian government? When don't they come out and say, I don't care how much you're spending the coalition, we're going to spend more. It's just what they do. It's what's in their DNA. Whatever we offer, they're always going to outspend us. We understand that. But to stand up and say that there's been a cut is nothing short of deceitful and disgraceful. So we have. We have taken the funding models of, of the primary schools, the independent schools, the government schools, we have taken them from where they are at the moment, and we have put 4.4%, 4.2%, 4.3% and 4% growth on top of where they are at the moment. $6.6 million, and on it goes. So there is not one school, except the 19 or so, most of them here in Canberra, that are actually going to have less funding than they have been. And if the Labor Party wants to install their funding back, let them come out and say they want to install the more money for Canberra and schools. That's what they want to do. But they won't. They're too scared. They understand that we've got this one right. They understand that we've got a fair funding model. They understand that we've got a needs-based funding model. They understand that the model that we have given them is transparent for the first time ever. It is uniform. Uh, they understand that David Gonski is now standing side by side with the Prime Minister, the Education Minister. They understand that what we are doing for the education sector is giving the teachers, giving the students and giving the schools the full respect that they deserve for such a critically important vocation. I would like to also just to have a little bit of a special thank you to the teachers and to the principals because it is my view that a lot of parents are vacating the space of parenting their children. And what they are doing, in my opinion, is that they are placing more and more responsibility, more and more tasks onto the schools to do some of the basic parenting that has always been the case uh, and, and the expectation has always been that various roles within parenting a child, within raising that child, a, a, a lot more of it used to be the sole responsibility of the parent. And they would send their kids off to school to be educated. Uh, however, what we are finding now is that there are many schools that have to provide a breakfast uh, program, a lunch program. They have to uh, explain to children how to be resilient. They have to explain to children how to handle bullying. Uh, there's a whole range of other social problems that, again, uh, much more than just your basic education, now have to be provided by principals, uh, year-level coordinators, welfare staff, um, and on it goes. I also think that we need to enable principals to be able to do their job best, and that, gives, that needs giving them autonomy, giving, the, giving teachers uh, some incentive to be as good as they can possibly be, to create some, to create some uh, uh, benchmarks that are going to see teachers continue to strive to be the best teacher that they can be. I'm proud to be part of a government that has developed such a fair and transparent funding model, one that has acknowledged the teaching profession for the critically important vocation that it is. Uh, this is not just about recurrent funding and, and having a very fair a recurrent model that we understand exactly now. If you send your kid to a government school, that the uh, state government is going to provide 80 per cent of the, uh, of the resource funding, uh, federal government 20 uh, for private schools. Flip that over, 20 per cent to the states and 80 per cent to the, with the Commonwealth government. Not only that, but we've also got a very, very strong capital grants program. And in my electorate of Murray recently, a million dollars to St Augustine's in Kyabram, a million dollars to Sacred Heart School in Yarrawonga, and $700,000 for St Mary's of the Angels Secondary College in Nathalia. We've seen $50,000 to a digital literacy schools for primary schools at Lockington, working in conjunction with the primary school at Rochester. To see years uh, five and six students uh, using uh, their iPad to have their computer programming of some robots really shows these kids in, uh, in today's primary schools uh, are taking the technologies that are available to them and, uh, and taking them just as second nature. 
These are some of the important steps that we are taking as a government. I'm very proud to be part of the coalition government when it comes to education. 